How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and in this video we're going to tinker. I'm gonna take you all along for a tinker. That kind of sounds weird, but let's do it. Um, I bought a Zebra LP2844 off of eBay. This was actually 25 bucks. That's all I spent. It was 15 plus $10 shipping. And the thing is, is that the seller said it was power tested, but they don't know how to further test it. So we're going to hopefully get a working printer on the super cheap. I'm gonna take you guys into the lab. We're going to do an unboxing. We're gonna play with it. And the cool thing about this one is it has the ethernet port in the back. So hopefully it has full networking capabilities, which would be amazing. Thank you guys for joining me today. And if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up and let's get into the lab. So here we are, they packed it in a large priority mailbox. It came from California to Texas, I would say at least $12 to ship. Selling price of uh, $15, lost a little bit on the shipping, minus fees, I don't know what his cost of goods are, but he probably broke even or lost or made only like a couple bucks on this sale. I hate packing peanuts, but otherwise looks pretty well packed. I'm gonna tr attempt to get this out without spilling any peanuts on the floor. Come on, score. And I think that is it, yeah. That's all that's in there. And these look like the corn-based peanuts. I think they're corn or cellulose-based peanuts. Though so those are biodegradable. I can already tell that it's got a nice yellow hue to it. UV oxidation of the plastic, which is very common on these types of printers and anything that was a lighter colored plastic produced in the 90s to um, early 2000s. There we go. The Zebra LP2844, oh, it's got a core in here. The uh, spring looks good on there. The roller looks dusty. The print head looks like it's got some adhesive on it that we could clean off. But this is what I like right here. It has the ethernet port in the back as well as we have our standard USB port if we can't get this to work correctly. This was manufactured in 2003 and made in the beautiful US of A. Power test and see if we can at least print something. Oh yeah, and this did not come with a charger, so let me go grab a charger. I'm gonna load some labels up in here. The guides, like that. Okay, so we're, we get a, we get a, uh... so the front button feeds a little bit, which means it definitely needs to be calibrated. We're gonna do that right now. And the easiest way to calibrate this is you put in, put in your labels. You're gonna turn the printer off. You're gonna hold the button while you turn it on and then you release it and it should calibrate. Looks like our print head is fine. We're printing some stuff there. So normally to calibrate this printer, we hold the button down and turn it on and as soon as it starts flashing red, you just let go and it usually calibrates, but for some reason this one's just printing out. It puts it into dump mode. It prints something out like this, which means that our print head's not fried and then it print out this entire long sheet also, and then it got out of dump mode. So I'm getting nothing from all of my button combinations other than like printing out some uh, rubbish dump mode settings. So I'm going to put this on the Windows PC and see if I can get it connected because we're not getting much of anything. We're not getting hardly any progress. I'm gonna hardwire this into a Windows computer, pull it up on the Zebra Bra driver utilities. All right, we have some progress. I uh, plugged it into the computer, hit calibrate on the computer, and I think I just got it calibrated to four by six, which is what we need because it was in, uh, the previous owner was using some sort of labels that were a lot shorter, so when I press the feed button now, it should feed an entire six inch label. There we go, that is good. The thing with these printers is if you don't get them in pre-calibrated condition, you can't even calibrate it um, from a Mac. So if, if you can't calibrate it from its own settings, you'd have to get a Windows computer in order to calibrate it. 
All right, so we definitely have some progress. I'm gonna try to print a sample test label. Let's see if we can print it. There we go. I had a feeling that it was gonna work. It's a little light uh, and there was a crease in the label if you can see that right there. So I'm gonna print it again just to show you that there's not a crease. But as you can see, it's a little bit light and I'm going to go in and change our settings for that. I always... We're at a, a speed of 2.0. It gave me some references when I was changing my settings. And a speed 3.3, darkness 9 looks the best. So we're gonna do... Actually, speed 2.0, darkness 9 looks really good. Um, we're gonna do... AB, we're gonna change that to AB. So we just made it, we just changed our settings to be a little bit darker. And now we're gonna print our test print again. And our test print looks beautiful now. All right, let's see if we can get this thing networked. That would be cool. Okay, now that we know that we got it working with the USB, we're gonna remove that and we're going to work on the networking capabilities right here. We've got an ethernet cable. We're gonna plug it into that and it's gonna do its thing. And that ethernet cable is plugged hardwired into my wireless router. Now that we have that plugged in, we need to figure out what is the IP address on this bad boy. So there's a button back here that you can barely see right next to the cord right there. And we're gonna press that button and it should give me our IP address settings. You can see right there at the top, TCP forward slash IP enabled 192.168.1.207. We're gonna need that on our computer. We're gonna need that for our computer. We open Zebra Setup Utilities. We're going to install new printer. Next, install printer. And then we're gonna type in LP2844. And we're gonna pick that. And then we're going to go to add port. Next. And let that load. It takes a while to load. It finally loaded. It took about three minutes to load. And we're gonna name that LAN Zebra. The printer name or IP address, remember that little piece of paper? Well, we're gonna take that top number, take that top number address, 192.168.1.207, and put it in there. 192.168.1.207. Port number, 9100, looks good to me. Hit OK, I'm gonna hit Next. We're gonna not check that, I don't want the fonts. Hit Finish, let that run. All right, we now have a Zebra in here installed. Let's see if we can do something. Con configure printer settings. We're gonna do width is gonna be four, height is gonna be six. Next, speed we're gonna do at 2.0, darkness at, at nine because otherwise It'll print a little bit light. And then finish. Open printer tools. We'll feed, let's see if we can feed one label. We'll send that signal to the printer. What do you know once one label came out? Let's see if we can print a test label. And there's no wires on here. Like that thing is wired. In the back, one ethernet cable. Let's do a test print. I have a, uh, I have a test print right here. We're gonna control P that. That looks good, hit print, send it over there, going through space, there you go. What do you know? I have this complicated export label that's going to Germany that we're going to print. It does take some time to go through space. Oh, I didn't hit print yet, sorry. There we go. Now it's going through space. There is our complicated export label. Everything there is looking good. And I would say it's not broken. Here again is my, there's my listing that I just bought it from. 
The Zebra, I don't know why they sent me a different printer because that one in the listing does not have that on the front. Also in the listing, that one doesn't have, there's a couple things that are a little bit different. Like I have a, a sticker there. So it's not the same printer, but it definitely isn't broken. Yeah, this is an LP2844 and for whatever reason, this one's an LP2844S on the bottom. For, for 25 bucks, I cannot complain. That was the Tinker. So that was the Tinker. Thank you guys so much for tinkering with me today. I was actually pleasantly surprised. I've never done the networking setup on this printer either. So I hope you learned something because I definitely did. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. I'm probably gonna give this away at cost on Instagram. So if you're interested in that, make sure to be looking out on my story there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.